Did you really just walk up to the camera and burp? Yes, you did. There's so many dogs in this house right now. Oh good, the trash truck is coming too. That's good for audio. I mask. What? What is that? You want me to make you a shirt? Okay, I'll make you a shirt. Is that what you want? You are so confused right now. Hi, my name is Christy. This is Roscoe. You've seen him exit my videos. This way. You know what they say, never work with kids or animals. I feel like I'm doing both right now. Roscoe. He actually tolerates shirts. My other dog, not. He just snorted. <laughs> and he's having none of this right now. Roscoe likes these two shirts, doesn't like these two, and definitely didn't like this one. And he absolutely draws the line at anything bride related. I found this really cute dinosaur print jersey material to make Roscoe a new shirt, just like he asked for. Look at that Tom. It will be patterning from this little raglan sleeve style shirt that fits him the best, with a few modifications. It's slightly too long and I will give him a little extra room in the armholes. As always, Roscoe comes to check up on progress. Look at that face. Apparently he likes to be in my videos on his terms only. And I admit that I have an unhealthy obsession with how cute his tail is. Okay, back to sewing. I folded the fabric in half and after smoothing it flat, I also fold the shirt in half to line it up with the belly part on the fold to chalk around it. I've slightly stretched the neckline so that it meets with the belly part flat against the fold. I was hoping that the blue chalk line was going to show up. It doesn't. So all I'm doing here is shortening the shirt a little bit, adding seam allowance, and then cutting it out. To make the armholes, I am using my finger as an anchor to mark where the sleeves fall. Then I dip it a little lower so that he has more room in the armholes. I recently got a bunch of really fun curved rulers from Amazon, but a curved ruler is totally not necessary. You can just connect the marks before adding your seam allowance and cutting them out. Next, chalk around the sleeves on fold. Add your half an inch seam allowance and then make like Joey Gladstone and cut it out. Repeat that process to make two sleeves and oh my goodness, these are the cutest little sleeves ever. Fold them in half and then pin along one end to sew. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and ends of each line of stitching. Finish the edges with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or with your serger. Turn the sleeve right side out and then placing right sides together, line up one side with the corresponding armhole. I'm gonna go ahead and spin that around so you can actually see what I'm doing. Pin from the neck down to the armpit, then turn the fabric around and continue pinning up the other side. Make sure you line up the sleeve and the armhole at the seams. Then sew continually one side to the other. I'm choosing to finish off my raw edges with my serger. However, what I'm apparently not choosing to do is show you with a good camera angle. Sorry. That deserves another Roscoe sticking out his tongue picture. Keep watching for even more. Okay, so once both sleeves are sewn in, Finish the hems by folding over a quarter inch and then folding over another quarter of inch and sewing all the way around. Now comes the fun part, the part where I make it up as I go along. 
I'm trying to make the spikes for the back, so I've doubled over the fabric and measured the back, which was about 18 inches. So I've transferred the 18 inch mark to the fabric. Measure in one inch from each end to account for the seam allowance. So I actually have 16 inches to work with, which is perfect because that divides easily into four. So each spike will be four inches in length. I'm also marking up one inch from the bottom to account for seam allowance and also in hopes to keep the spikes standing up straight. Now that I've opened that up, I'm gonna fold it right back over so I can pin and sew along each spike. Remembering to keep the ends open. Here's where I put my sewing skills to the test with the corners by leaving the needle in the fabric while I lift and lower the presser foot to pivot the fabric around each spike. Clip each corner to reduce bulk before turning it right side out. I wasn't sure if this was going to work, but it did. So place a safety pin on one end and feed it through so you can turn the fabric right side out. I spent too much time pulling the corners out, which really didn't matter because I'm just gonna fill it with stuffing anyways. I'm very happy so far because it is so cute. Speaking of cute, here's another tongue pick with a snore at the end. <laughs> I really wanted the spikes to stand up straight, so I bought polyfiber fill, I think it is, from Joann's. I tried a couple methods of using my loop turner, a pen, my finger, anything to try to stuff this in the teeniest tiny hole that I left. It took a while, but I got there. Line up the spikes with the back seam and then fold it down so that it is facing the inside of the garment, I think is a good way to explain that. Apparently not because my dog is now asleep. Does anyone else's dog snore like this? Take the other side of the fabric, facing them right sides together, and then pin all layers together. I'm boring Roscoe. He's perked up again to check on my progress and lay on my mat. He did not appreciate me trying to pin on his back, and he was definitely not in the mood to try it on yet. After all of that pinning, I found out that Clips held this puffy dinosaur spike sandwich together better. That one put both of us to sleep. Carefully sew, making sure that you are getting all three layers. That middle puffy layer makes this very difficult. The exciting part to see if the spikes will stand up straight like I sure hope they do. Success, they're standing up straight. Nobody likes a floppy dinosaur spike. Right, Roscoe? A floppy tongue, yes, but not a floppy dinosaur spike. Okay, moving on to the neckband. I measured Roscoe's neck and was really surprised to see that it was 14 inches. It seems really big. My dog's got a fat neck. Just kidding, Roscoe, you're beautiful the way you are. So I measured 15 inches to accommodate for the seam allowance and wow, I really missed a lot of steps here. I was too busy fat neck shaming my dog. The important parts are that you sew it together into a tube, zigzag stitch the raw edges, and then flip it so that it's right sides together and pin the neck band to the neck hole. The giant 14 inch neck hole. It's his fur, makes him look fluffy. Once that's complete, sew with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or a serger like I'm doing here. That keeps the neckband stretchy so that it'll fit over your dog's head. Go slow sewing near the spike because you wanna make sure it still stands up straight. I want to finish the bottom of the shirt with bias tape that I made from the material itself. This is really easy to do. All I did was cut a piece of fabric that measured the length of the shirt's circumference and then made it an inch and a half wide. Pin it so that the right side of the bias tape is facing the wrong side of the shirt and then to make a clean finish, fold over the edge before sewing. When you get close to the end, overlap the bias tape on top of the folded edge, then trim off any excess after sewing past the beginning by about half an inch. Now flip the shirt right side out and straighten the seams down. Fold the bias tape in half to meet the bottom of the seam and fold in half again. Pin in place, and then this hides all of the raw edges and creates a finished shirt band. Roscoe has entered the room to make sure that I am not fat shaming him anymore, and he's now snoring in the background. 
Once again, take your time when you get to the spike so that you don't ruin your hard work of making sure that it stands up straight. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a dinosaur doggy shirt in all of the cute Roscoe footage who has a perfectly sized neck. And he absolutely loves his shirt. Oh. <laughs> I love this little guy so much. He's so tolerant of everything I make him do. Ah, look at this. A rare dinosaur spotting in the wild. I did have to bribe him with bones. However, I didn't put them in the grass, so I'm pretty sure he's eating doo-doo. And is now slow motion trotting over to me to give me a kiss. Ugh. He smelled like bones, so we're in the clear. I love how the stuffing made the dinosaur spike stick straight up as he chases me inside. But seriously, how can you resist that face? I'm probably annoying you by now with all of my gushing. And even cuter when he looks like a gremlin. He's a sleepy dinosaur. Night night and thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Make it a great day.